Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about non-metallic steel. Uh, this is something I've touched on before and we've done a couple of videos on but I really want to deep dive on it and break it down into sort of the techniques that are going to make a blade like this shine. Uh, there's sort of a back and forth tactic to this that I think is actually the tricky part. So we're going to start out actually this blade has one of those sort of like a flat area and then the actual blade edge. And so what I'm going to do here at the start is just black out that top area. This is something I'll do often with like axes or halberds or glaives like this. Basically, wherever there's an area that isn't a cutting area, it's not actually part of the blade, I'll kind of black it out and I'll, I'll clean that up later. Like it's messy, but it doesn't need to be anything else then. It helps you keep your eyes as to your true reflectiveness and that draws the visual interest of the blade. For our paints today, we're gonna to focus on basically dark sea blue and ice yellow. Now, we're gonna use two other paints, as you saw from the paint list, but most of the work is just these two colors. Okay, so we get a little bit of that dark sea blue on our palette, we get a little bit of that ice yellow. And what the first thing I'm gonna do is just pick some areas that I feel would be dark and some areas I feel would be light. And I'm gonna sketch in the extremes. Now, your very reasonable first question is, well, where should those be? Especially on like a weapon. Some shapes have very obvious light placements. Cylinders. So if you've ever seen a Space Marine leg, it's because that has very obvious light placements. A blade, however, especially something that's moving at odd angles, it can be basically anywhere. My advice is as follows. Break it up, have light in interesting places, like gathers toward the ends, of solid surfaces, so like hence the edge of that blade where it curves is where the light should be gathering. But there would be secondary reflections other places in the blade. As a point of fact, there's no exact rule set for this. But there's a couple of guidelines. First off, the way that you move your brush is going to have an impact on the final look. So in other words, you saw how if I move horizontally, slicing down, that can give it a more beaten, weathered look. If I go horizontal and go for smoothness, I have a more basically clean look. So now we're just gonna mix some paint. I'm gonna take some of this uh, dark sea blue and just integrate about three different variants with the ice yellow. So now we got a nice little step of gradations. Now after my initial values, which are just basically does the light and dark look good there, I'm going to start fading out the edges. Just start you know, putting a nice layer down. We're not really in a glaze yet over both of these, right? Just pushing the colors around. We're gonna to get to the real tricks. I know it doesn't look like anything yet. We'll get there. So now a little bit darker, same thing over the two new edges we just created, right? And then I'm gonna to go to my darkest color, uh, that sort of deepest, the closest one to the original dark sea blue. And then again, over both edges and over both edges. And what that gives us is the our standard uh, shingles on a rooftop layering of our light source there. Now I'm using ice yellow instead of white because it's a little bit softer of a color and it's gonna have some, it's a little warmer and it's gonna have some nice effects later on. You can also just use white for this if you want. Uh, okay, so here is the first of your big pieces of advice. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make on non-metallic metal is they make all of the areas of light and dark equal size so it's like little blocks you have a quarter inch of light a quarter inch of dark a quarter inch of light a quarter inch of dark that looks unrealistic you want them to be of varying sizes horizontally along the blade the next thing you want to pay attention to is you don't want them to be blocks you're not building a tetris game here so you see how I'm extending the light at the top of the blade, towards the blade's edge. And I'm, with, I'm, I'm widening the shadows near the blade's recess where it's gonna hit the flat, okay? So it's not, it, instead of thinking it as you stacking squares of light and dark, which is already wrong if they're equal, you're actually building triangles. And this is the best insight I can give you. 
I promise you, if you change to thinking of this in these sorts of light and shadow triangles in your non-metallic metal, that alone will step your game up in a huge way, okay? So you see how the shadow is now becoming more of this recess thing that emanates out and gets thinner as it's pushing up towards the blade's edge, okay? All right, now comes the fun part, blending it together. I wasn't worried too much about getting a smooth blend initially because it doesn't matter. It's just really not important. I'm also going to go ahead and black out the two hacks that are in his blade just because they're messing with my eyes. But now we play the glazing game. So using the exact same colors I just used, I'm going to slowly glaze. I noticed that I my highlights weren't quite strong enough here. So I'm integrating a little bit of uh, Chimera's the White and some Pure Ice Yellow and building up those highlights. But most of what I'm going to do is glaze color transitions together. But I want to talk about exactly how I'm going to do that. So I start with the deep glaze. This is just pure dark sea blue, but very, very thin. This is dirty paint water thin. I'm always pulling the color towards the shadow, right? My brush comes to rest in an existing shadow. I'm also always wicking my brush off first before it touches the model. When I'm working with a glaze, I don't want it to get out of control. So now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So we're introducing a little more of the white to really brighten up that edge and make it feel like a reflection. Non-metallic metal, a lot of people get obsessed with light placement and sometimes that can be important. Things like spheres and cylinders have a very sort of natural way they read, but those are also pretty easy to figure out where the lights and shadows go. Unusual shapes or blades and stuff, you can kind of just be freewheeling and go wherever you want. Light can be anywhere. It's all around. It's bouncing off of every object in the environment. It's coming from the sun, from secondary sources. But if the reflections are acting in a way we recognize, it will ring true to us. So here uh, I'm putting an edge line on. Now, let me talk about why I'm doing an edge line. You saw me do one very earlier in the video, which I covered up most of, okay? Let me talk about why I'm doing it here, even though I'm not done with the blade. Edge highlighting sells non-metallic metal. It is the thing that makes it feel like metal because light gathers along the edges of metal. By doing this and putting this in place now, it helps me really frame the whole blade in my eye as I continue to glaze and adjust. So it's good to do it midway. You will have to do it again at the end, and that's fine. It's going to help you a lot to do it, okay? Now, we're gonna take some of that ice yellow, and we're gonna take some of that white, okay? And we are going to work that into a very thin glaze. I've often talked before about how Light colors are tough to glaze with, and that's true, but both of these are very pigment-rich paints. See how light that is? This is your perfect glaze consistency. So, and then what I'm going to do is, before I had glazed down with the dark sea blue and made sure that my brush was stopping in the shadow and depositing the most pigment in the shadows. With this, I'm doing exactly the opposite. I'm glazing over the middle area of the shadow and pulling towards the light with my brush always coming to rest at the high point. So I'm depositing the most light there. Why is so much of this about going back and forth? Well, first off, because it's a lot of little adjustments. Non-metallic metal is about having kind of everything be in this exact right spacing, okay? But secondly, because paint is translucent, there's a completely different effect when you have this thin layer of the white glaze going over top of the darker color. It, pre it presents this sort of almost fuzzed effect that can sometimes look chalky in other places, but on a blade in non-metallic metal, it's actually quite helpful to us. It gives the impression of reflection and this sort of fade of the light into the shadows, right? So. I always make a little more light area than I actually want to be bright, and you'll see why in just a moment here when we get to the next step, okay? 
but you notice how I still have my rough triangles, right? See how the shadow is basically a little triangle there in the center of the blade, and then on that turn, it's brighter. Okay, now comes the magic. One of the things that makes non-metallic metal look non-metallic is that it should reflect the colors of the environment around it. Oftentimes, with, especially with an upward facing blade like this, that means the blue of the sky. So here I've made a very thin glaze out of Vallejo model color blue-green. Again, look how utterly thin that is. This is a filter. And again, I'm going to, I'm not covering everything, I'm starting in the middle highlights and pulling toward the shadows. My brush again ends the deep shadows where this ultra thin filter will have almost no effect. By glazing in this soft interference color, this is what's gonna sell the non-metallic metal. I'm still heating the triangle shape and it's going to make it feel like it's impacting the environment. And then one more time, I'm taking my light, very thin glaze and going over the top of it because again, I want a little bit of that white interference, white fuzz on top of the now blue color. Back and forth, back and forth, and we get to a nice reflective shiny blade. So there you go. That's non-metallic steel. I'm gonna repeat the same things on the rest of it. You'll see those pictures in just a moment. Give this a like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions, drop them down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.